Research has proven that positive experiences in our earliest years actually help build brain architecture. So does that mean negative experiences can weaken brain architecture? The answer is yes, and the culprit is certain kinds of stress. The body and brain respond to stress by raising the heartbeat, pumping out adrenaline, and sending out stress hormones like cortisol, preparing us to act in a crisis. One kind of stress, called positive stress, is beneficial. It's normal and healthy for children to face challenges like meeting new people or attending the first day of school. The stress responses triggered by these events are usually short and not too severe. This kind of stress is positive because it prepares the brain and body for stressful situations later in life. There are kind of these multiple faces of stress. So we have kind of what we call good stress, which is this kind of controllable stress in our lives, things like studying for a test, solving a problem. Um, at the time, we may not like them, but the reality of it is that we grow from them, we develop adaptive coping skills, and they kind of benefit us in the long run. Children surrounded by caring adults experience positive stress in ways that benefit and strengthen their brain architecture. It's how we prepare our brains and bodies for other stressful events that we will experience throughout life. Sometimes children face more serious events. Think of a bad accident or a tragedy like a death in the family or a natural disaster. These events can cause a more severe stress response with the potential to last a long time and come back often. Support from caregivers can buffer the severity of the stress response and help keep stress levels under control. If the stress is kept in check, it won't do lasting damage to the child's brain and body. That's called tolerable stress. And so this is things that are bad, um, but they're the kind of things we can't avoid, like the death of our parents or moving away from home, things that everyone goes through. And they're not, they're not positive. They're kind of negative in, in value, but they're the kind of things that everyone goes through. We can all kind of support each other, and they're made a lot easier by support networks and you know, coping skills and stuff like that. The attention and support of caregivers prevents tolerable stress from causing lasting harm to developing brains. A third kind of stress is called toxic stress. It occurs during repeated exposure to bad situations like abuse, neglect, or serious hardship. If no supportive adults are around to help buffer the stress response, the hormone levels stay dangerously high. Severe stress is especially toxic if it occurs often and lingers for a long time. That can have a negative impact on brain architecture and on other systems in the body. Toxic stress can cause serious health problems later in life. These are things that are like pervasive, uh, v typically very uncontrollable and unpredictable. Uh, abusive relationships, poverty, um, loss of job, loss of social status, things like this which are kind of beyond our control and are very pervasive in our life and really kind of have this detrimental effect on us. Toxic stress can weaken developing brain architecture and damage other body systems in young children. The effects can be a lifetime of health challenges, including physical and mental health problems, and even addiction. To ensure a healthier future for our families and communities, we need to work together to support caregivers and children, prevent toxic stress, and provide the kinds of nurturing experiences that build healthy brains and bodies.